And the one thing about the coronavirus quarantine is everybody now knows about their kids' education. That's never happened before. So from that could come some really important things, I think. What are you seeing? What makes you hopeful? And what are you concerned about? I've been unbelievably inspired by the leadership I see at the state and local level. Food distribution in schools aren't just academic places of academic learning. Schools are social safety nets. Um, they're doing an amazing job of, of uh, feeding tens of millions of children and family members and community members every single day. I would say on the positives, I'm seeing a lot of great grassroots level efforts. Uh, so I've seen efforts of schools rallying to uh, raise dollars for Chromebooks to get, to get them to low-income families that may not have had them, to uh, rally to raise dollars for hotspots so that young people can access um, the internet from home and access distance learning. You painted a rosy picture, but is there stuff that's concerning you there? Um, African Americans are dying at six times the rate of, of white people. And anytime you have a, a financial crisis, poor, marginalized, disadvantaged communities get hit the hardest. Anytime you have a healthcare crisis, those communities get hit the hardest. Anytime you have an educational disruption, those communities get hit the hardest. And so what we're seeing across the country is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, but I hate to say it, it's not surprising at all. But the only good thing that I hope comes out of this is those massive inequities, inequalities are slapping us in the face right now. We can't hide behind them. One of the things I'm really worried about, Andy, and you will not be surprised to hear that, is we cannot get out of the habit of measuring students and their progress and where they are. Are you worried that this is just going to lay the groundwork for further uh, rollback on accountability, either state level, national? You're already starting to see, well, maybe we can't do a you know second year of assessment. And you know, just here we go again. So hawks like me are going to be pounding the table and saying, hell no. 2004, Hurricane Charlie wiped out Southwest Florida. These counties that were dramatically impacted were shut for, they didn't have classes for at least three months. They came back and of course the call was, it's not fair, we shouldn't have accountability, we shouldn't have the test, you know, our kids are stressed out. And I said, no, I think we need to have accountability. I think children will rise to the challenge and I know teachers will as well. And interestingly, the, the districts that were most impacted by the storm were the ones that had the best gains based on our accountability system. And so I would hope that accountability stays. What's the impact of what we've experienced uh, with this shutdown and what's going on going to be on the ed tech industry, on people's appetite for it, on quality, and on the, the sector and the business side of the sector itself? In the fall, schools are going to need to either delay all of the fall instruction while they teach what they missed in the spring, or they're gonna to have to try to operate at more than 100% efficiency. That is impossible without education technology that is properly selected, implemented, supported, and used. What do you wanna see from uh, Joe Biden on education? And, and, and what are you hoping to see there in terms of his campaign and a possible Biden administration? Most of the focus tends to be on we have to add more resources. We absolutely have to be able to do that. Uh, but we really like to see Vice President Biden's administration go further. Uh, for example, uh, there's a lot of conversation in the country around paying our teachers better. We absolutely support that. But we want to marry increases in federal support to pay our teachers better with reimagining teacher preparation programs. Uh, many of the teacher preparation programs, according to the teachers themselves, simply do not equip them with what they need to be effective in the classroom. Uh, there's also the capacity to bring in new providers that frankly tend to have more diverse um, uh, students in their pipeline so that we can diversify the teaching course. So we'd like to add to the increased investment in dollars, add some reimagination in terms of uh, how we prepare our teachers. What does the education field need to do going forward to make sure that in, uh, there's more support for education? When we did our uh, Recovery Act in 2009, that was about $800 billion in education. We got 100 of that $800 billion, uh, you know, a huge investment. In the stimulus of what we've seen so far today, that was you know, $2.2 trillion, so more than twice, uh, almost three times um, what, we had act, what, what happened uh, in the past before. I think only about $20, 20 billion <laughs> went into education. So uh, the, the only conclusion you can draw is that education simply is much less important to the current administration than it was to ours. Through this crisis, if we get education right, what does it look like? 
if we don't get it right, what is the worst case scenario for our kids? If we don't get it right, we'll end up doing the same thing we've been doing, which will mean that we'll have huge learning gaps between those that are gaining the power of knowledge and those that are being left behind. If we do get it right, we'll have a system that is student-centered, harnessing technology, where students reach their God-given potential each and every year. Give us your best case and your worst case scenario for what comes out of this in a couple of years and where we are as a country. I'll start with the best case scenario. I, I think uh, it, it's a wake up call where we say, listen, we're gonna do whatever it takes to close the achievement gap and serve all people better. My worst case scenario, I guess, is the opposite of that. People will uh, awake from this coma, will get a vaccine, uh, the gaps and, and inequities that are being exposed now will be worse than ever. The hardest uh, uh, hits will be taken by those most vulnerable and the beat will go on. That will be a regrettable, criminal, and it will, will serve Americans very poorly, all of us as we go forward. You know, the Obama manual slogan of a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. I'm hopeful that part of the hundreds of billions of dollars that, have, that will be spent, I believe, I'm hopeful that we can do some big things. Thanks for what you're doing to, you know, to keep the conversation moving and to get good information out to folks. Appreciate you both.